there's always a, a common misconception that, that ranchers that are in it for profit are just out here to, to make a profit from the animals. And, and I, the people that are in the ranching community ranch because it's their way of life. They love it. And the only thing that keeps them in business is healthy and productive animals. And so in them doing good management practices to keep their flocks and herds healthy, they're producing a safe and secure food supply. And so they use good management uh, when there's problems that are beyond their management controls for whatever the reasons. They will rely on vaccines or antibiotics. Uh, but sheep and goat industry have probably the most, one of the most limited amount of products available to them because they've, there's just not many labeled. And so the, there's not many issues in the sheep and goat industry regarding um, antibiotic use because there's just not a lot of antibiotic right. use in the animals. One, it's not that well needed right. unless there's an animal health problem. Uh, two, there's not labeled. If there is a challenge for sheep and goat ranchers, it's using, finding an adequate product when they need a product, uh, because many times it's not labeled. And so there, it's not labeled to be used for sheep or goats. There's probably more products available for sheep than there are goats. So goat producers are, are always looking to, if they're using products, they're typically extra label drug use. And in those cases, they're working with their veterinarian to, know when they're using extra label or off label because some products don't have an established withdrawal time so that veterinarian will also always take a look at it and if it's labeled for beef cattle they'll most likely double that withdrawal time to be safe for them and, and that, so, that is a veterinary yeah, veterinary service and mm -hmm. practice that's that's accepted to keep the animals healthy and safe mm -hmm. but uh, that's why it's left in the hands of veterinarians and not Right. not over the counter. Right. So speaking of animal health and veterinarians, another thing that uh, we probably need to mention is uh, just keeping these animals healthy from the start. So there is a generally accepted you know, regimen of vaccines that we give to you know, kids and lambs. Uh, oftentimes that's done with the consult consultation of a veterinarian. But uh, you know, when we work lambs, we, we mentioned earlier about uh, you know, castration and tail docking and things like that. At that time of year, we call it marking lambs or you know working our, our goats when they're young and and uh, able old enough to respond to vaccine mm -hmm. uh, but you know still young enough that we can do some of these other procedures on them uh, so we'll some of the main ones we give would be the clostridial vaccinations for what we call the overeating diseases which is probably I guess the most common mm -hmm. one we worry about in sheep and goats so uh, that type of clostridial organism mm -hmm. it lives in the animal continuously and uh it's it's funny because it seems to attack the ones that are doing the best when they when they get weaned often when they're weaned not always but when they get weaned and they they start really growing uh some things sometimes just get out of balance and they change feed they change the feed ration and that can bring out an outbreak of this mm -hmm. organism that's in them naturally so we give them a vaccination when they're young to prevent that, a uh, common term for that is called overeating disease. But uh, And often not, when they're giving that overeating type C and D, there'll be a, a tetanus included correct. in that. If you open up a wound and we're doing them in pens that um, may have a little bit of contamination or fecal contamination, there could be some tetanus in the ground. And so that tetanus is, is uh, real easy to control with a tetanus antitoxin or a tet tetanus toxoid. And, that they need to work with their veterinarians to identify which products that they need to use best. Um, other products that are very common to sheep and goats, uh, one of those would be overeating, or not overeating, I'm sorry, sore mouth. All right, all right. So sore mouth is a very common disease in sheep and goats, particularly um, in, in goats and in West Texas. And, and as the name describes, it causes sore mouths and, and sloughing of the skin and they just don't eat. And mm -hmm. they, they, they deteriorate. Mm -hmm. so. And Texas A&M, the research center, for many, many years has produced a vaccine for sore mouth in sheep. And they've also used that in goats. And so Texas Vet Lab in San Angelo um, distributes that now. And I believe uh, uh, Colorado Serum also produces so, a sore mouth vaccine. Okay. But that, that vaccine is to be used if a flock or a herd is endemic to that problem and it occurs every year because you are introducing the live virus. 
So if you haven't ever seen it, you shouldn't use the vaccine because if you do, you introduce it to the place. And um, other common problems to sheep and goats is caseous lymphadenitis. Um, it's a, it's a, a problem that gets in their lymph system and it causes abscess. You'll commonly see it up under their jaw, in their flanks, in and around. It's a pretty significant problem in goats um, and sheep. And again, there is um, a fairly effective vaccine. Uh, Colorado Serum uh, produces one for sheep and Texas Vet Lab produces one for goats. And so if that's a problem, it, it's um, not a quick fix because the vaccine doesn't cure animals that have been exposed to it. But if you vaccinate the replacement ewes or does or nannies mm -hmm. over a number of years, you, you can, can, clean, up you can clean up your clean up the animals. Yep.